So let's talk about some of our options for uh, changing alignment and gaining angles. Why don't you go through the smith peat osteotomies and talk a little bit about this? Certainly. So this is an example of a Smith-Peterson osteotomy or a Ponte osteotomy. There, people use them interchangeably. Technically, the Smith-Peterson was described in ankylosing spondylitis and a fused spine, and Ponte was an immobile spine. But people tend to use the two terms interchangeably. So this is simply a posterior facet osteotomy. You can see in the, the picture here, spinous processes have been uh, partially removed. The inferior aspect of the lamina has been removed, extending out through that facet joint and removing all of that uh, facet material. Then with segmental instrumentation, you can simply compress on those and close those osteotomies, getting a small correction, maybe five maximum of 10 degrees at each level to correct that. And you can see that x-ray here, a significant thoracic kyphosis is segmentally realigned over a long, uh, long construct, kind of a harmonious correction. And that works quite well in, in many cases. When you do these cases, do you leave a certain length of rod at the top in case you have to add on to something you've done or not necessarily? People have described that. I don't necessarily do that. If I have one side where the rod is a little long, in the past I would have bent it up and tried to cut it or do things. Now I'm a little more likely to leave a little bit of a length of rod uh, in that setting just in case you can do that. But I don't intentionally do that uh, regularly. If I left a little bit too much, I just have a lower threshold to leave it at this point. We haven't really talked about it throughout the talk, but at this point when we start to talk about osteotomies, do you want to mention something about monitoring? Uh, absolutely. Every single one of my spinal deformication uh, cases gets multimodality monitoring. So that's somatosensory evoked potentials, and we tend to do transcranial motor evoked potentials. And we also have free run EMG hooked up on our lumbar roots. Uh, I think that's crucial and, you know, when we talk about realigning the spine, there is a risk of neurologic injury and an early warning with some evoked potentials really can, can save you if you can reverse a corrective maneuver and try and uh, uh, save somebody's function. Why don't you take us through the next slides and uh, walk us through this procedure? Sure. So this is a, a three representation. One of my previous fellows, Fatty Nasser, put these together uh, nicely for us. So these are uh, the SPO or Ponte osteotomy is a segmental resection. You can see the components listed there. So interspinous ligaments, the inferior aspect of the lamina, the facets, and the ligamentum flavum are all released to mobilize the spine segmentally. And you can see that we do that with a drill or a punch. And you can see here that 3D model, again, where you see the inferior aspect of the lamina has been cut and it angles up. And they call it a chevron osteotomy because it angles up through those facets. And really the key is to get that superior aspect of the uh, superior, or excuse me, the superior facet from the level below. The tip of that needs to come out. Uh, here's a little magnified picture. And you can see there's no bone remaining in that foramen. And when you look here, the tip of that superior facet is really the key. We oftentimes, when you drill through here or you punch through here, you leave a little remnant of that. You don't want to leave that bone in there. If you do and you compress this down, you're leaving essentially a, a free floating piece of bone in your neural foramen and you can end up with a radiculopathy. So, how often do you see neuromonitoring changes when you're doing osteotomies? Fortunately, not very often. We have an algorithm in place to deal with them. And sometimes we end up seeing a, you know, a false positive, which is stressful, but uh, better than a, a true positive. Uh, it's very rare, quite honestly. Throughout the case, you sometimes will see some potentials drifting down, and the key is to pay attention to that. If the patient's, you know, getting sweaty and electrodes are falling off or things like that, to address those, and particularly before I do the correction maneuver, I want to make sure I have got a good baseline set of potentials before I do my correction and during and then after to make sure they're stable. And we continue to monitor through the remainder of the case to make sure they haven't drifted down or changed. Uh, just because you do your correction doesn't mean they're, you're out of the woods at five minutes later, they're stable. We monitor all the way to the end and then we get a wake up test at the end. Now looking at this x-ray you have on this slide, it looks like we're advancing beyond Smith Peaks and going into the PSO area. We certainly are. So. When we think about the inst instantaneous axis of rotation, we use that with the Smith-Peterson osteotomies, manipulating the intrinsic axis of rotation. In a pedicle subtraction, we can create our own. That is useful in a, a patient